Alright everybody, welcome back to Conquering Commander. Today we're going to be looking at a game featuring my Karn Silver Golem deck. Uh, for the complete deck list, go to puremtgo.com, look at my article series Conquer and Commander. Um, this deck is uh, here for uh, Robot Week over at Pure MTGO, and uh, it's essentially an update of my old, my three-year-old Karn deck. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at my opponents here. First up, we've got Kozilek, Bur Butcher of Truth. This is another um, uh, essentially brown deck or artifact-based deck. This guy's a little more competitive than me. Um, his uh, main goal is essentially to ramp into Kozilek, um, but he has got some other tricks as well. He beat me once or twice while I was playing my Karn deck, and... Uh, so we'll see what he's got up his sleeve. Uh, next up, we've got Asperia, Supreme Judge, Azorius Control, typically. Uh, not really a whole much more to say other than that. Finally, we've got Endric Sar, Master Breeder, who's cool. He uses a lot of tokens to kind of uh, go about and do crazy fun things as well. Um, so we'll see what happens with him. Let's take a look at my hand. We've got uh, one, two, three, four lands plus three and dynamo. Uh, that's pretty much keep for me. Let's see what we've got going on here. Um, Endrick Star leads things off. Uh, Kozilek starts off with Phyrexian Furnace to deal with some graveyard hate. I draw into another land to play Muta Vault. There's Lightning Greaves for Enric Sar, Revoke Existence against the Greaves from Esperia. Um, let's take a look here real quick. <clears throat> Kozilek played Stryonic Resonator. I considered adding that to my um, to my deck. You know, uh, the deck in the original incarnation was pretty mana hungry and... Uh, I just didn't need another activated ability, so um, I didn't add it to the deck. Uh, we'll see how... It, well, I don't know. I guess it could come in. Uh, the Furnace uh, gets used to uh, get rid of the Revoked Existence in Asperia's Graveyard. Um, I draw into Urborg. Urborg is allowed in a colorless deck because it does not have a black mana symbol on it. It says Swamp. So uh, the reason I added this is because I do have some uh, lands that do not tap for mana, and Urborg helps out with that as well. I'm going to go ahead and activate Mutavault and attack somebody. I attack Kozilek. Yeah, because Kozilek already beat me once. I remember that, so that's why I went after him. Uh, Darksteel Ingot comes in. Uh, Chromatic Lantern comes in for Asperia. There's M Mana Vault to help Kozilek ramp. I play Voltaic Key, and then Temporal Aperture. Uh, Grave Pact comes out for Endric Star, which is good uh, for keeping uh, our creature control. Relic of Progenitus comes out for Kozilek for more Graveyard Hate. I play uh, Thran Dynamo, which is going to work with Voltaic Key to untap, retap for Gilded Lotus. And then I play Druid Satchel. Okay, so this is... <laughs> yeah, I even say it right here. This is called overextending. Um, what I really should have done was just used uh, the Lotus Mana to uh, use Temper Aperture to put something in play. Uh, really, I didn't need to, to do this much in terms of uh, ramping. I've got two big ramp cards right here. I just didn't need to do it. And I admit it, and, you know, I saw, I, I said it right there, it's overextending, and it ends up kind of biting me in the butt in the end here. Uh, Endric Sar plays Temporal Extortion. Uh, nobody pays the mana. Um, you know, the Temporal Extortion is one of those Punisher cards. And I think that if he had any better of a board presence, somebody would have paid it especially because nobody's really hurting right now for life. But since he didn't really have a whole lot going on, uh, nobody paid it. And then he's still hoping for land, and he doesn't get one. 
So <laughs> the extra turn does nothing for him. Um, Asperia goes ahead and does what control ducks do and gets rid of all artifacts and enchantments because there's no creatures out there. Uh, this hurts his own Chromatic Lantern, but that's fine. Um, Kozilek uses the Relic to draw a card first. And then does the same thing with the Strionic Resonator. So that sets me back pretty good. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of screwed right now because I don't have a whole lot of action. <laughs> I mean, I can attack with Mutavault and Blinkmoth Nexus. Or I can strip mine something, but there's nothing that needs to be strip mined. Kozilek gets set back too, which uh, helps him a bunch. However, he does have Eldrazi, two Eldrazi temples. Because he uses uh, Thespian Stage to copy uh, the original. Uh, so, because he's more focused on uh, casting uh, Kozilek for value, um, he's more focused on the Eldrazi. He has more Eldrazi stuff. Mirror Works is a good card. Period. Uh, I've got Bone Horde. There's stuff in the graveyard. I'm going to go ahead and play Karn first because there's not really much in terms of... <laughs> there are no creatures in the graveyards. That's right. Uh, Conspiracy is an Endric Sar deck, and he names Brushwag. The whole reason you use Conspiracy in Endric Sar decks is so that uh, his um, death trigger won't occur because they're all Brushwags now. Instead of um, thralls, you can make as many thralls as you want without killing Andrixar. All right. So Asperia is still come in. She comes out to play. Kozilek uh, plays Thran Dynamo and copies it, and then plays Mind's Eye. Does not copy it and starts drawing cards. All right. So I use the Ever Flowing Chalice to copy my Rogues, uh, the Rogues Passage, because it's nice to have unblockable stuff. Then I go ahead and I attack Kozilek again. Because to me, Kozilek is still a pretty big threat. He's got the two Thran Dynamos and the Mind's Eye. He's going to be able to cast his commander and gain a bunch of uh, card advantage now. Um, and then I Everflown his Chalice for two. Bone Horde does nothing right now with empty graveyards. There's Andrixar. He's a Brushwag. That's awesome. Um... There's sort of Feast and Famine. Asperia equips and plays Elixir of Immortality. And Asperia has the same idea as I do, that Kozilek is a big threat. And then uh, with the untap, um, she sacrifices her Buried Ruin to get Chromatic Lantern back. So Asperia is hurting a little bit for mana. And then uh, uses the Elixir of Immortality to gain some life. So she's up to 45. Kozilek's feeling the heat now. He's at 26. He ended up discarding Storm Cauldron, which is an interesting card in an all-artifact deck. I'm not really sure what the point of that is, but he did it. He's playing Kozilek. Yeah, he's got a ton of mana left over. And since he's Divining Top, does nothing. I draw into Soul Ring. Uh, I turn my Nexus into a dude. And what I do is uh, I attack <coughs> Kozilek with my Flyer. And I attack Asperia with Karn. Uh, the reason I attacked Asperia is I'm hoping that she can draw into some sort of removal to deal with Kozilek. Um, he'll just cast Kozilek again because he's got enough mana. But, uh, you know, I figure one extra card isn't going to hurt anything. I guess I could have attacked with all three of my dudes, including Mutavault. But uh, I don't think I want to help him out that much. <laughs> So, um, Kozilek keeps drawing cards, and Endrixar plays Narcona Revenant, which makes a bunch of thrills. I love the thrill picture. These guys are awesome. Brushwag's all over the place. Okay. So Asperia uh, goes after Kozilek again, and then... Play or gets a few cats from White Sun Zenith. Forgot to play Soul Ring first. There's Chromatic Lantern. Alright, who's Kozilek going to go after? Kozilek is going after Asperia, which I think is the right play. Um, you know, just because I've only got one card in hand, I don't have a whole lot of offensive presence. 
really the Azorius player is the control player that you got to worry about. So, um, you know, he gets to draw a card from Asperia, but then he gets annihilated for four. That's good. He can just uh, sacrifice one of his cat tokens and then some other stuff. Let's see. He So he sacrifices a cat token, uh, chromatic lantern, soul ring. What was the other thing? Oh, and an island. Um, and he saves a blocker so he can block Kozlek. Oh, and he uses Academy of Ruins to put Soul Ring back on his library. So Kozlek has eight cards in hand. He plays Hall of the Bandit Lord, Mana Crypt, copies it. Predator Flagship. Um, this is a card I considered in my new version of Karn. And I was just concerned about uh, the mana requirements. So it's a good card, especially if you focus on ramping as much as this this guy does. Let's see what he does. All right, I guess that's it. I play a land, and then I I I, I attacked uh, Kozilek. Pretty sure I did. Open up. Yeah, I attacked Kozilek. So let's see what the Ulamog player does. Or not, I'm sorry. Ulamog. Or the Endrexar player does. He Diabolic Revelations. Plays Ashnod's Altar, which is a nice sack outlet. Sacks all his dudes for a bunch of mana. He's got 12 mana or something like that. He's trying to figure out how to use it. I think he exsanguinates. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, he does. He exsanguinates for a decent amount. Come on. It's slowing down for some reason. Let's see here. Use all your mana. Don't crap out on me. I do not want this replay to crap out on me. Let's see. Are you going to... Oh, there it is. Exsanguinate for 12. All right. And then he goes in and he attacks um, Kozilek. And Kozilek uses Predator Flagship to kill the Narcana Revenant. So Kozilek's still at one. Oh, but he's dead pretty much. So he uses... Uh, he sacrifices Ghost Quarter to kill off my Winding Canyons. That sucks because I can't get into another land. So that takes care of Kozla. All right, fine. So Asperia draws into Soul Ring and then copies the Sword of Feast and Famine and starts going after the Endric Star player. Um, so that's 10 damage with Asperia right there. I'm making him discard two cards. One was Drana. Drana's awesome. Another's Consume Spirit. So I'm a little worried now because the big flying Asperia is problematic. Um, and I draw into Ink Moth Nexus and I play it and I go after Karn too. Just because Karn with Ashnod's Altar, or, I'm sorry, not Karn. God, why am I saying that? Endric Sar with Ashnod's Altar is problematic. He does have two cards in hand. Asperia has three. Another thing is I didn't want to give Asperia more cards just yet. Not until I had some sort of a better presence here. There's Fallen Angel, another sacrifice outlet. And a bunch of these dudes get sacrificed to Ashnod's Altar. And he casts Argentum Armor. Which is not what I was expecting in an Endric Sar deck. Uh, the armor is going to go on Endric Sar. And he's going to attack Asperia. Um, blowing up Asperia with the Argentum Armor. So this is going to be funny. Uh, he actually has the chance at uh, commander damaging somebody with Endric Sar. <laughs> so there's Death Render. I go ahead and I attack. Um... Okay, so this is dumb. Stop, 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 stop. I attack into the Endric Sar player because the Asperia player is saying sh she has nothing. Fine. Well, when I attack, it does nothing because of uh, Karn's triggered ability. He just blocks with Fallen Angel. What I should have done was used Rogue's Passage to get in so that I could try and commander damage him because he's at 62. And I think I... 
I've only hit him. I don't know if I've even hit him, hit him at all. And Bone Horde's a 2-2. Two -two. Right now, I'm I'm not doing much. <laughs> okay, this is another thing. So, Endric attacks Asperia and gets rid of, getting rid of the Death Render. So he's not worried about me. There's Ariok Survivors. What do these guys do? Turn target equipment card for the graveyard to the battlefield. You can attach it to Ariok Survivors. I don't think he has any equipment in the battlefield, does he? Or in the graveyard. Oh, he does. Death Render. So, um... Now I finally get smart and I make Karn unblockable. I draw into Elixir of Immortality, which isn't going to help me too much. And I play it. So Endric goes ahead and plays Thought Picker, which is going to help him sculpt people's draws. I think he picked me. Yeah, he picked me and he exiled my Wormcoil engine, which makes me sad. And then he uses Argentum armor to kill off. What does he blow up? To go after Asperia. Oh, he blow he blows up the um, the blocker. Death render activates and <laughs> brings Rhea Dawnbringer back to still block. Uh, but he doesn't have another card, uh, creature in his hand, so Death Render can't do anything crazy. There's Archangel's Light, but there's not enough cards in the graveyard. It only brings him up to 19. Okay, I've got Joyra's Toolbox that I just drew. So again, I'm going to uh, make Karn unblockable. Now, what I really should have done was equipped him with Bone, Bone Horde first, and then done it. So, oh no, I did anyways, okay. And I go after Endric. Stop, 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 stop. Um, so that is a total of 14 commander damage. Uh, if I had actually hit him correctly early on using my uh, Rogue's Passage, he'd be at 18, one hit away from uh, being commander killed by Karn. And then I play a toolbox. This is... Uh, this is where we, you know, it's late and people start making mistakes. He he uses the Argentum Armor to get rid of Death Render. Admittedly, if he had used the Argentum Armor to get rid of any of my dudes here, I would have just regenerated uh, Karn. Uh, and I could have, uh, like if he wanted to get rid of my Bone Horde, uh, I, could, he, I could have used Karn to turn the Bone Horde into a creature and then um, regenerated him. I wouldn't have been able to save the Rogue's Passage, though. But anyways, he uses it on the Death Render and kills off the uh, Asperia player. So, I sacrifice my Elixir, and I draw into Frexian Revoker. <laughs> okay, so I make Karn unblockable, and I get in. So he's one commander damage away from dying. Uh, one thing to remember when you play Frexian Revoker, Frexian Remo Revoker is not like Pything Needle. Um, you know, it doesn't prevent the card from being played, just the activated abilities. However, I know I can uh, cut off one of his sack outlets. And I cut off his Ashnod's Altar. But he does have, he ends up sacrificing the Thought Picker Witch to uh, keep me from drawing into Precursor Golem. And there's Butcher of Malachar. And then he uses... Uh, Argentum armor to blow up the Bone Horde. At this point, I don't care about Bone Horde uh, because Bone Horde um, uh, is superfluous. I just need to hit once more with Karn. So here's the question. He's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3. I couldn't have done it. He's got seven dudes, but he basically he forgets that he's got Fallen Angel as a free sack outlet that would have triggered his Butcher of Malachar and kept me from winning here. But I probably should have, you know, Rogue's Passage did in the beginning. I make Karn unblockable and I win. So it, the ending isn't very satisfying, but, you know, it was an interesting game with a lot of cool stuff. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks, Tom.